All right. Um. Yeah, this matey's channel. This is Nick Crowley. His name is. If you're into this kind of thing, I, well, you probably have already found it. But if you don't know this person's channel, he's got a great channel. I watched two of his videos. And just thought, yeah, I've got to react to some. But they are really dark. They are really dark. Um, YouTube's darkest channels. This is. So this should be interesting. Because you think YouTube, you think. How dark could you possibly get on YouTube without it registering with someone? Like. I've got age restricted stuff and it's like sometimes they age restrict things and you kind of think really you age restrict that but not this like what well anyway <clears throat> yeah YouTube's darkest channels let's go darkness can be found everywhere and here on YouTube, that is especially true. In this new series, I'm going to be taking a look at some of the darkest channels on the site that I have yet to cover. These are accounts surrounded by mystery, whose videos are disturbing, strange, and even heartbreaking. It just disappeared. These are just a few of YouTube's darkest channels. A few months ago, I made a video entitled, The YouTube Kidnapper. In it, we discussed a channel that had been posting concerning videos, videos that had very dark implications. One of the most off-putting parts of the 00390 channel were the videos that showed the person behind the camera stalking different women. I've had many people reach out to me and ask if there's been any updates around this channel, but unfortunately, there hasn't. However, I have become aware of another channel that shares many similarities. Specifically, when it comes to filming and stalking women without their consent. The channel's name is Dan Silly, and it's run by a man of the same name. And the content within his channel is disturbing. His very first upload is a three and a half hour video entitled, I Will Grab Woman Soon. For the first portion of this video, Dan is filming himself walking the streets of LA, critiquing different women on how attractive they are. Okay, there's a woman up here that's like 30 something, you know, 32 or more. Her, trying to speed up so I can get an image. Her ears were narrow, not. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's the catch, right? She was sitting by herself. I could have said, hey, she just looked Asian. An over chubby Asian, you know, Americanized. Now, though this isn't illegal by any means, it obviously comes across as a little creepy. And throughout the video, it only gets creepier as Dan shares his belief that our society is made... It's weird because... <clears throat> I mean, don't get me wrong. Tom's, sometimes you see some girls out in public and you are like holy fuck like but it has to kind of hit you like because sometimes as well because i had one um i was knocking door to door for a window company <laughs> right i was actually pretty good at it surprisingly um but uh you're knocking on door after door and normally it's it's like you had a, in the areas I was in, it was around London, so you had a lot of like, like the nan of um, like Indian families. So you know what that's like. It's not attractive. And, and they're all like the nan. They, they seem to be really old people they're everywhere, like old women, old men. And then if not, just kind of, just kind of regular people. And I knocked on this one door and this woman answered the door. And she was literally, like, stunning. And it because I, I just was not, and I'm not even typically, like, bad at that situation. Because it was, so, she was so stunning. 
and it just completely took me like I was like did not expect it it was literally like being punched by beauty and I went because I was there saying this is my rap I'd say literally knock on the door they'd answer it and I'd say uh you're right I just wonder if you're interested in a window cleaner or not and then they say yeah or they say no um that's pretty much it like if they say yeah then i'll say all right well this then and then if they say no then no uh but yeah so that was my rap all right i'm here to uh yeah i'm all right i'm just wondering if you're looking for a window cleaner i knocked on this woman's door <laughs> and she's like i say she's just stunning and, like, and it just took me by surprise and i said and she's like oh you're right and i was like all right i was just wondering if you're looking for a cleaner and then she was like no and i was like all right no worries and i walked off and i realized how weird of that how weird is that like to have just someone knock on the door and go i was just wondering if you're looking for like a window cleaner then yeah you kind of it's not as it's not kind of in, as intrusive but to knock on someone's door but it's just because i literally and it weren't until i walked off and i thought I just said a cleaner. I just literally said, just wondering if you. I should have knocked back on the door and said, oh, by the way, <laughs> I didn't mean cleaner, I meant window cleaner. <laughs> like, I mean, you probably don't want it. I just want you to let you know I wasn't, I don't live over there and have seen you or something. <laughs> but then you're just going to dig yourself into a hole. But that's when you kind of, like, everybody, or every man, like, looks at girls. But to go out, and just kind of walk around and go, oh, there's a woman. Let's see, let's see if I can get a visual. It's like, yeah, that's what that's predatory. That is predatory. May not be pred. It may not be the next step, but you're you're there. You're in the ballpark. Well, yeah, let's go. Too safe for a woman. But in this place, the, the place is too safe with police. In other countries, it's way less safe. In order to get a bodyguard man, you know, that will protect you, you need to be a good woman. You need to act well. But in here, here the women don't need to act well, so therefore, they're disgusting. You know, they're not good women. But the most disturbing part of this video comes within its description where Dan writes a lengthy rant about how badly he wants a woman for himself. Because I guess that's the, the three truth and a half it. hour runtime just, it wasn't enough to squeeze it all in. The rant starts with Dan. That's what it is, like, his whole women are terrible. In other countries, they're great. Yeah, in other countries, they're great because they're desperate. And if you go over there and you've got money, they'll love you. That's all, that's literally it. Because they have nothing. It's like, yeah, if you go to a third world country, then yeah, you you, you would definitely get pussy. But <clears throat> even then, not necessarily. Only if you go and buy a woman, because still women are women. And if they don't like you here, they won't like you there. It's as <laughs> simple as that. Like, it's very, uh, yeah. And it is always them men. It's always them that, when they like, really hate on women that like can't get women and the truth is they just really want a woman and and what they mean by women are not good women is they're not good women because they won't put up with my weird shit i'm unattractive to them so that means they're not good basically and it's like well at the end of the day bro you need to work on your game because this is the truth and if anyone's a stalking man out there that's watching this here's a bit of advice and you think because you're too ugly it's never true with women it's never true they don't have the same brains as us trust me trust me on that if girls don't like you it's not because of how you look they might say it is but it's not it's because you're a sap Oh, let's go. And saying, I'm going to grab women. Don't you want to grab them? Squeeze them? I am going to grab them, but only if they want me to. 
It will be annoying asking so many times, but they could get me arrested if they happen to not want me to grab them. And I do. Later on in the rant, he yeah, says there's nothing that wrong with that. he ends up with cannot drink caffeine, eat dairy, wheat, etc. She also should not be on social media and desire for you to impregnate her. The rant ends with what? a chilling line. I will have live footage shortly of me do not want me to grab them. And I do. Later on in the woman? rant, he says that the woman he ends up with cannot drink caffeine, eat dairy, wheat, etc. She also should not be on social media and desire for you to impregnate her. The rant ends with a chilling line. I will have live footage shortly of me causing woman to feel very high amounts of pleasure. I will show you exactly what you need to do in order to achieve a similar result as mine. From the first video alone, it seems clear that Dan's view on woman is concerning. I mean, the video title is literally, I will grab woman soon. And in it, he's scouting women on the streets, judging them solely by their appearance. And in his own description, he admits that what he's planning on doing could get him arrested. The insinuation on what he's referring to is clearly there. I'm looking around, I'm looking for what I want, I'm shopping for what I want to do. I'm shopping for food, I'm shopping for sex, okay? This is not bad, why is this bad? And the content only gets worse from here. Hi. It's really not bad. Every man goes out on a Friday and Saturday night with that in mind. It's the difference is, is like, you don't just say, well, I want one, and therefore, this is like where I think a lot of men fuck up, is they think, well, I want one, so therefore, I should have one. But it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it really doesn't. It's like, if you can make, pretty much, right, if you can make one girl, woman, like you, then others will. Because it's kind of a universal thing. And it's not to get on a fucking Patrice O'Neill rant where I start saying about women, but... Yeah. And the thing is, he's not a bad-looking motherfucker. This is the thing. It's obviously not how he looks. But there's a lot of girls that will like that look. The, the thing is, is he's... He's a fucking weirdo, and he creeps girls out. That's the thing, he's a creep. And it's creepy. You come across creepy, and... I'd like to have a chat with this motherfucker. But anyway, yeah, let's go. Why are you ignoring me? Why exactly are you being, like, tired of being sexualized? Like, isn't it good to, like, be valued for, for something? After the initial video, Dan switched his style to approaching random girls and filming them. It appears that he does this in an attempt to pick them up. Typically when approaching them, Dan says lines like, Hi, I like you, or I saw you over there and I want to kiss you. It's hard to watch as the people he's approaching want no part of it. But for the most part, it seems that Dan is unable to understand this. As he continues yeah, to, follow, to understand what I, I'm unable to understand even why. after they tell them that they aren't interested. Do you think I can't run or something? Oh, he looks a bit Buffalo going? Bill. How are you? Okay. Um, Why not? Because they don't give you consent. You don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, I don't need consent. Right? That's a myth. Oh, is it? Yeah. Through all the hours of content, there are also multiple instances when Dan is filming where he clearly focuses on the private areas of these women. Uh, do not. The more that Dan films these girls, the more you'll start to notice that some of them appear to be very young. In fact, some appear to be much younger than 18. Meanwhile, Dan is in his 30s. This is something that is pointed out in many of his comments. With one I'll comment you, reading, well. you should make sure that they're older than 18. A lot of the girls you've been approaching look like kids, dude. Now just from looking at some of the reactions of the people that Dan are filming, it seems genuine. 
But as it turns out, there is actual proof that all of this is real. And it's proof that makes this channel and these interactions even darker. I don't think he could be supervised 24 hours a day. Daniel Patrick Silly is a high risk sex uh. offender who has moved to Ronert Park. As it turns out, Dan Silly is actually a registered sex offender, as he was arrested back in 2017 for harassing a minor. When I said he looked, he looked good looking. Yeah, that picture of him definitely didn't. He looked like holding it down there. It looked like he's like one of them fucking just long haired fucking. Do you know what I mean? Girls love that shit. Looks like a like a rocker dude or some surfer dude. Girls would wrap that shit up. But then when I saw him face on, he definitely has the bone structure of a murderer. Hundred <laughs> percent. First guy. In a sexual manner. It's just another piece to an already dark puzzle, but the arrest did lead to some good. It appears that once Dan was released, he stopped posting videos of him approaching and harassing random girls. And in fact, his channel has seemingly been dormant since then. But that isn't quite the end of Dan's story. As it turns out, since his arrest, he has been actively posting on two separate channels. There, he posts videos such as 15 year old white girls served me food and all looked me in the eyes. Marriage material? I saw a 14 year old who had a round. And how to marry a 14 year old girl. All of these videos are currently on YouTube. All of these videos are being posted by a sex offender. It's truly one of the darkest sides of YouTube that I've ever encountered. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How much stuff like this is going on unnoticed? He gets to put that up. And I've had like, I've had some norm stuff they didn't like. And kind of, but he just puts up this creepy Nazi shit. And it doesn't flag up anything. I have to wait days, literally, and I I think it's because of Opie and Anthony, Norm Macdonald, and and like Louis C.K., um, but mainly Opie and Anthony, I think, because it started when I started doing a lot of Opie and Anthony. Every video I put up, I pretty much have to wait for it to be okayed by YouTube, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the comedy. There's nothing else on my channel that's really going to be any bad, something bad. But he gets to put up 14-year-old girl, like, and YouTube doesn't want to watch that and check that before it goes up and have a, I have, it, gets a it gets a review when you put it up. And if it flags up with something, you have to click human review. I have to do that with all my videos. And they all my videos come back two, three the other day I had videos that took them five days to actually review and look at. I put them up five days before and it took them five days to look something up, to watch my video and say it was okay. Right. And it was, um, yeah, like Opie and Anthony or something like that. But he gets to just throw up all oh, 15 year old girls. Oh, thought I'm going to marry a 14 year old girl. And she's, or oh, look at this 14 year old girl with a tight bump. Like, Someone make that make sense to me. That's just insanity. How is that? <laughs> Let's go. Because I literally do feel like freaking like, like he sounds like, like Buffalo Bill and too. My uh, rectal uh, brain like literally feels like attacking these women. Hard right, fuck like, me. Just like strangling them and stuff. Like honestly, um, and making them submit to me. I feel like these women. Like <laughs> seriously, you know. But before I conclude Dan's story, I want to add a disclaimer that it is very likely that he is suffering from some type of mental illness that doesn't make his Fuck actions that. right in any way, and it doesn't Fuck absolve that. him of everything he's doing. But I no, want to ask you to please nothing. not go to his channel and leave nasty comments, because feeding Fuck into that. someone's delusions like that will open Fuck that. 
report go on his videos in fact i'm gonna do it i'm literally gonna do it i'm gonna go on every single one of his videos and report it to like yeah whatever you can i've never reported a video but whatever the nearest thing to that weird shit is i'm gonna do i don't report video i definitely am seeing as he gets to put up like i want to fucking rape women and i can't put up opie and anthony a lady die clip <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's infuriating me more than his videos. YouTube is... I'll tell you, Elon Musk needs to buy YouTube too. Only heighten his current mental state. And that would honestly just make things worse for Just everyone. put him down. Literally put him down. YouTube has its fair share of dark channels. But there are countless others that are more mysterious than Dan's. Channels whose entire purpose seems uncertain. Channels like David Sardison, a page likely run by a man of the same name. Throughout David's two year span on YouTube, he has posted 8,431 videos to his channel, which roughly evens out to be 11 videos a day. Posting that often alone seems like an impossible feat especially for someone like me that likes to take their time. But it's what this channel is uploading that has spurred an internet mystery. The first video that David posted came back in January of 2018, and it simply showed a TV playing in a bare room. It's like a hospital room. From the looks of the angle, it appears that Dan was recording this while laying down, likely a on a bed. bed. The title of the first video is Restored by the Fords, January 15-1, which is in reference to the television show that was playing on the TV. Every single one of the 8,000 plus videos posted since then has followed the same exact premise. David is lying down on his bed recording the TV in the same room. Now the fact that David was posting so many of these videos throughout the entire day of every single day shows that David must have spent the majority of his time simply lying in bed watching TV. It's something that seems very mundane, but also slightly off-putting at the same time, each video more similar than the last. Just the same thing, over and over again. Who is this content for? Why was David posting so many times throughout the day? And why was he always in that room? Well, for the first year of this channel's existence, these questions were left unanswered. Nothing changed. The same room. 8,000 as well. Content. I post a lot. Like... I can post sometimes 20, near 20 videos a day, definitely over the span of two days. 8,000. I've, like, I've only just gone over 1,000, and that's in, like, six months. And to be fair, not all of that was going flat out, but I have gone flat out putting things up and only got to 1,000. Like, it's hard to rack. Uh, but then I suppose, if not really, not if you're not having to say anything or you're just literally filming. Um. Crazy. Every single day. But roughly a year later, and I don't edit. videos changed. Months go by, and a year goes by. And then what happened? The content stayed the same, but suddenly he was posting from a different room. There was no explanation given to the change in scenery. David was just now posting in a different location. There's something about this room, something that looks familiar, something unmistakable, that curtain next to the TV. A clear indication that David wasn't filming at a house anymore, and that he was likely filming from a hospital room. I said that in the first place, he was at in the first point, place. another switch in David's videos was starting to become apparent. It seemed that with every upload, David's camera work got shakier and shakier. He's dying. Because of this, and everything else that we know, 
a theory can be put forth that explains what we might be seeing here. I'm dying. It seems like David may have been bedridden at home, and he used YouTube and watching TV as a means to pass the time. This would explain the upload schedule and why he had seemingly devoted his entire life to posting these videos. But maybe David's health got worse and worse, something that the shakiness of the camera could signify. Maybe this led him to be transferred to the hospital, where he continued being bedridden and posting his videos to YouTube. It's an incredibly sad theory, but it wasn't confirmed or denied, and though it seems likely, David's channel still remained a mystery. But a twist was coming, and it was one that put the entire situation to rest. Six months ago, David inexplicably stopped posting his videos. The channel that once put out nearly a dozen videos every single day was halted altogether. Some reached out to ask if David was okay, while others speculated that maybe he got better and that he was no longer stuck in bed. David's disappearance further deepened this mystery, as no one knows where he went and why he stopped posting. But once this happened, I immediately feared the worst, and for the sake of this video, I did some research. Sardison David Glenn, 1966-2019 to It is with heavy hearts that we announce the death of our beloved David. Our appreciation to the nurses on the second floor of St. Vincent's for their care of David. This obituary was posted online 23 days after David's final upload. The middle name is even consistent with a second channel that David ran called David G. Sardison. And the mention of his time in St. Vincent's Hospital is consistent with him being switched over to a hospital bed. So it appears that our initial theory was correct, and unfortunately, David was unable to recover from his failing health. It's a tragic end to what was already a very sad mystery. And the saddest part is that this is far from the only case of a YouTuber inexplicably passing away. Hi guys! What? We'll stop there. Come back for part two. But Jesus, that was some heavy shit, that last one. That's why these videos are great though. He's this channel's great. Nick Crowley, his name is. Honestly, go and go and check his videos out. So good. I literally only watched two and just what from watching two I was like, yeah, this needs to be sank that I react to. It's just like so Yeah, it's just great. I mean it's not great, but it's like the things he finds, it's like and it's it's good because it's like it's kind of always an eeriness, but it's, it's always just in, very interesting. But it, it definitely, he has the videos that just tap into your emotion. From the first one to being infuriating, to that one being kind of like creepy, but then very depressing. But I, I said that at the beginning. You could tell from the room he was in. I don't even think that, first, maybe it was his bedroom. But to have the bed up, the telly up like that is what they do in hospital. Like that is stereotypical hospital tele position. A yeah, funny story about that. It's my nan used. To, my nan worked out she could turn someone else's telly off. She loved that. Literally, that was yeah. She she thought that was great. I think she like that was when she was dying as well at the end, but she found one bit of joy. Her controller worked on someone else's telly. <laughs> and she'd turn it off and it, it just confused them. She loved it. But anyway, that's the reaction. Part two coming up. Sweet.